Believe it or not, this is the meal that is responsible for me going vegan. Seriously, it is so surprisingly delightful. Now, of course there's plenty of reasons why people go vegan. For me, this meal made me a believer. <laughs> okay, so that may have came off a bit strong, but I guess what I'm saying is, for me, this meal is what made me consider veganism. If that subject is interesting to enough people, I can make another video on the topic while illustrating this dish in variations or others. I guess what I'm saying is, if you're looking for something to wow some socks off or find something more platitudinous for a mixed diet family, this vegan meal will breathe life into the unimaginative weekly meal lineup. Outside of the taste and protein profits, one of the things I like most about this recipe is that it can be zero waste. Stems on broccoli are edible. So simply chop them up into half inch cubes and toss them in to get a head start before the rest of the dish. Unlike a banana peel, which is also edible, but there's a bit of instant regret and self-reflecting on your life choices when you bite into one of those. Yeah, at least that's what I remember. I try to block it out of my memory. During the cooking process of this recipe, you wanna have some extra vegetable stock on hand. This is in case you accidentally have your heat too high and or your oil or sauce is just soaking up way too quickly. You can make some variations by simply swapping out the broccoli for cauliflower. The roasted cashews, I do not swap with any other nut since other nuts do not have the same neutral flavor that cashews do. If I'm out of cashews, I tend to just use more chickpeas, but whatever you do, Stay away from salted cashews in this recipe. Say you wanna leave the cashews out and add maybe some pinto beans or black beans. Definitely make the recipe without any swaps first. This way you can get a better understanding of how whatever you're going to add is going to encourage the flavors of the dish. Either way, you got this.
I don't often look to avoid carbs, but if you do, this meal should hit home. I more frequently look to avoid gluten, and this recipe meets those needs as well. See, I like to eat a lot of fruit. Bananas, apples, mangoes. These fruits contain a good amount of carbs, but on the other hand, they're also really great sources for potassium, vitamin A, vitamin C. And with all diets, there's that give and take. So I find it best to eat different things in moderation. But I'm no saint. I get stuck on certain foods longer than I should, often. For this recipe, you can use any, uh, you know, beef crumbles or something else if you didn't want to do the walnut meat method you see here, which on the positive end, that could also help speed up some of the prep time. Often, but not always, I like to stick with more of a, you know, a whole food approach. Cause looking at product packaging for, you know, substitutes can be daunting. <laughs> this may be just me, but does anyone else see the ingredient list more of like a warning label? <laughs> anyway, the walnut method, if for whatever reason you're allergic, this can also be done with say some sunflower seeds. In the description, you can find the method for that as well. During the cooking process of this, at some point you see me point into the middle of the pan. And that's because I'm trying to show you the remnants that's left from the walnut. That there, you can pour a little more stock on as you see I did, or even add a little bit more flavor with like a, a dry wine, making sure that it's vegan, of course. And that's going to deglaze the substance, meaning it's just gonna lift it right off the bottom and now incorporate it into the recipe packing some real good flavor in there. When making the recipe, I actually enjoy the avocado cold. So if I know I'm making this later in the day, what I'll do is actually refrigerate the avocado. Then when I add the hot, you know, taco walnut mixture to the cold avocado, the best way I could describe it is kind of like that same feeling you get when you add cold ice cream to a warm brownie. That extra ice cream on top is so wrong of you, but it just feels like the right thing to do. So I just made this meal and it was for my mom for Mother's Day. She loved it. She started teasing me saying like, uh, you know, where did I buy it at? In her words, she said, this tastes like 
a restaurant made it. My mom's not vegan, by the way, and she's also not a skeptic. The biggest praises are from my dad, who is totally a skeptic. He's the person that you just don't tell him it's vegan until after they had seconds. His praises came with like some real old school cool phrases. Pops, yo, this is banging, yo. Yeah, my family calls me Pops. Story for another day. But what can I say? He's, uh, he's my dad, so, you know, I played along. Yeah, the uh, roof is on fire. The best way to describe this recipe is to say it tastes very similar to an Alfredo. It's very creamy and I just love that it comes together in one pot. Sometimes to help this meal go further, I have a recipe for roasted cauliflower that I'll use and I'll put it in the description as well. With this recipe calling for canned coconut milk, you can substitute that with another thick plant-based milk such as oat or soy, pea, or if you have some dairy-free yogurt that you need to use up before the expiration date, you could also toss that in as a substitute. Just make sure it's plain. Although dairy-free yogurt costs like a small paycheck. So if it's expired already, you better use that up for like lotion or skin cream. I don't know, but don't let it go to waste. This is another recipe that I like to reserve a little bit of vegetable stock on hand, just in case your heat is a little too high during the process of boiling or simmering, you may evaporate the liquid too quickly before actually cooking the pasta. So with a little bit of reserved dairy-free milk or vegetable stock, you can add that in along the way during the cooking process. All the recipes you've seen here are linked in the description. If you're looking for more easy, vegan, high protein recipes, check out my last video linked here. Till next time, believe in good. Peace.